everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Dreamy Tech. This is the Dreamy Bot D10 Plus. I did receive this sample to check out today, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box and packaging. You'll notice on the side, we have a QR code right here, identical graphic from the other side of the box and a little product sticker right here. This is a self-emptying robot vacuum and mop combo. So let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature featuring our user guide and manual in multiple languages with charts and diagrams going over everything you need to know about your new RoboVac, FAQ section, troubleshooting, all of that good stuff. We also have a really helpful quick start guide double-sided with the QR code to download the Mi Home Xiaomi Home app. We have one extra vacuum bag, white power cord and cable. We have one side cleaning brush. We have our mopping pad module right here with tank. That's how you're gonna be able to fill it up and add water. We have the vacuum itself. We'll come back and look at that in a minute. And then lastly, we have our charging base and self-empty base right here. Let's look at this in more detail. Starting with the top of the base, we have a lid that opens up to reveal one already installed vacuum bag, bringing your total to two. They have instructions up here that show you how to add and remove the vacuum bag. You'll notice down here, the vacuum will drive up to charge. We have our two charging contacts. And we have basically air is gonna come and force its way through the vacuum and suck the contents down this channel right here. We'll look at that in just a minute from the other side. But we have nice grip here for the wheels to rest on and to be able to drive up on the platform. You'll notice we have additional sensors here, Dreamy's logo and branding and an indicator light. Here's a preview from the side, a nice side profile from both sides. The very back has additional product info and a cable management channel right here. This is where you're gonna plug in the included white power cable. And now the very bottom reveals this nice clear window with just Phillips head screws. If you ever have to remove this because there's a clog or debris, you wanna clean it, you'll be able to visually see any clogs and easily remove with just a screwdriver. We also have six feet right here providing us with nice grip on our floor and surface. And we have some additional product info here going over the model number, rated input and output, and some warnings and precautions. Looking at the vacuum up close from the top, we have our LiDAR navigation module, two physical control buttons here, Dreamy's logo and branding, with a flip up lid revealing our dust bin, and we have a cleaning tool, QR code to the DreamyBot D10 Plus right here, the Mi Home app, Wi Fi indicator light, reset button. Our dustbin removes. We have a filter that we can clean and replace. It just pops right off there. You'll notice it from all different sides and angles here. We have some instructions showing you how to clean the filter. And on this side, we can just open it up if we needed to manually empty or clean. We can do that. And you may see we have this little doggy door here as I'm calling it. So the contents, it's gonna force air through one side, right? That little flap's gonna force air through and it's gonna cycle everything back out and suck it out the other side. Now you'll see what the vacuum looks like with the dust bin removed. And it just snaps right back in place. Let's look at it from the very front. We have our navigational bumper, additional sensors there. Here's a look at the side, the very back, the other side. And now we'll flip it over to the very bottom with additional product info. This is where we're gonna install the side cleaning brush, charging contacts, omnidirectional wheel, cliff sensors. We have spring-loaded drive wheels, our main brush roller here that's removable for easy cleaning. You'll see we have both bristles, so a nice brush, and we have some rubber there. And then it just gently goes right back in place and snaps. This is the self-emptying again, right? That's how it's gonna suck the contents out. And then lastly, we have the area where we can install the mopping module. Set up simple and straightforward. We need to attach the side cleaning brush right here. We have a square mount. So just line it up, snap it in place. You can pull to remove and replace as needed. And then our mopping module, if you want to install that right now, just slides in place right here with our two contacts. So it'll just click in, nice snap and click. And then we have these buttons on the side where you can easily remove the module as needed to refill and get everything nice and clean. You'll notice too, we got that little 
drive wheel on there, but it just snaps right in place. Now let's go ahead, let's charge this up and set up the mobile app. So everything's plugged in, connected and charging. We also have the Miho map downloaded on our iOS device. It's also available for Android devices. Once you download it, sign in, you'll be at this home screen where you can view and add your devices. So you may notice we have quite a few Dreamy products already connected. So in this case, we need to add a new device and you'll select the plus icon in the top right hand corner where you can add it manually, scan it or create a smart scene. We're gonna add a device. Now it's gonna work on auto detecting nearby devices. So if it doesn't find anything, no big deal. You can just go ahead and browse and find your product. So in this case, we're gonna choose robot vacuum. Now we need to choose our make and model. They have quite a few products here. So we're gonna be looking for our dreamy vacuum right here and they have nice images to be able to find it. So there's the W10 Pro, we gotta keep going. So here it is, it's the DreamyBot D10 Plus. We're gonna select it. Now we need to reset the device. So we gotta press both buttons for three seconds and we'll hear a voice prompt. Start charging. All right. Waiting for the network configuration. So it said start charging, waiting for the network configuration. Now we're gonna choose device reset. Give it some permissions. At this stage, you need to select your Wi-Fi network and enter your password. Please note this device only supports 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks. Then select next. Then we need to choose the vacuum from our Wi-Fi. So we can connect to devices Wi-Fi right here. Go to your network. There it is, dreamy vacuum. We're connected to it and we're gonna go back into the app. We got a prompt letting us know the robot and the phone are connected and we're back in the app and we're making our way through getting everything connected. All right, everything got connected and it jumps to this screen where you can set the room. So in this case, let's just choose living room. We'll hit next, set the name. We'll leave it as is, select next. We can invite family or friends. Let's not share it right now. So we had this option right here. Do not prompt you to share the home device process. Don't prompt. And now we're taken into the device itself where we can choose to accept some terms. And then we have a couple of key features to get ready and organized, how to set everything up. And we can start our experience. Fast mapping prompt right here. We're gonna exit out of that for now. Clean up, we can just hit that button right there and it'll start cleaning up. No go zone, so it walks you through the app. And in this case, we do have a firmware update available. So let's go ahead, let's confirm that and update it right now. So everything's been updated. Let's go back to the app. You'll see our device right here. We can enter in. And the first thing we're gonna go over are the device settings. It's the three dots in the top right-hand corner. You're gonna select that. Then we have our function settings here. So device settings, time zone, voice and volume notification, carpet boost, toggle on or off, child lock resume cleaning mode. So basically if the battery gets low enough, it'll go back charge and then continue cleaning. Do not disturb. We can change the hour right there for that. We can set that up. Next we have scheduled cleanup. So choose the hour and the minute, which days of the week you want it to clean. And we have a cleaning range where you can just clean a particular room every day, things like that. Then we have our cleaning history. This will populate total area duration and total times once we actually use it. Accessory usage, a nice breakdown, letting us know when it's time to replace filters, brushes, things like that. Remote control options, we can drive it with our phone. Locate my robot. I am here. We get an I am here prompt. Then we have our general settings where we can change the name location management, device sharing, if you wanna share this with friends or family members, intelligent scene settings here. Then we have the firmware update, help and feedback, and we have some additional settings right there for you to view. And then lastly, we can delete the device. Say we're getting rid of it. We want to re-add it for whatever reason. We can delete it right there from the app. And then looking back on the main screen, we have our cleaning area, runtime, and battery percentage right there followed by our cleaning settings. So different modes, sweeping, mopping, or mopping and sweeping if we have the mopping pad attached. Suction settings, so basically quiet, standard, strong, 
or turbo. And then we have our water settings. So like low, medium and high. And then once we have a map populated, we have customized cleaning and cleaning sequences that we can look at. Here's where the map is gonna be populated where you can look at the whole map, room or zone. Then we have our auto empty settings here. So you can toggle that on or off and the frequency after one, two or three cleans. No go zones once the map's complete. Then we have our map management. So we have multi-floor mapping support. If you wanna maybe take this to basement, first floor, second floor, things like that. You could do that right here and this is how you create the map. Then we have our play button to start cleaning and the charging button, have it return home to start charging. Now, without anything else to do, let's go ahead, let's let it map and clean. We got our first clean and mop out of the way. Let's see how everything held up. So first let's look at the dustbin. It did automatically self empty for us right here. And looking at the dustbin, you'll notice we actually have some dust collected around the edges right there, but the filter looks great. Let's open it up to reveal the inside, get a sneak peek of the leftover dust. So really fine dust particles it's able to capture and collect. Anything that's larger will be sucked right out with the self empty. I brought the vacuum bag down so we can peek in there. You'll see a collection of the household contents it was able to vacuum up. Yes, we got some new carpet, so you'll see some carpet fibers in there. And let's turn it over. We'll look at the main brush roller. So we picked up this cable tie here. That was stuck on there, but no long hair or anything like that. You will have to keep an eye out on this brush roller for hair. If you've got a lot of long hair people in your house, even long pet hair, you'll have to periodically trim, cut back, make sure it's not tangled. That will affect the performance. We're looking at the mopping pad and module now too. Water tank has been removed. Looks nice, very clean still. This is equivalent to basically wiping your floor with a damp cloth. That's really the effectiveness of a mopping module like this. It's better than nothing, but it's not gonna replace, you know, actually scrubbing your floor for really hard stains or things like that. But so far, so good. Now let's take another look at the mobile app again, since we have our map populated. This was after a really quick mapping run. It took less than 10 minutes to populate this map for us. You'll notice too, it got all of our rooms correct. We haven't even adjusted or edited any of that yet. And our current cleaning area, 31 square meters, 29 minutes of runtime. We have 55% battery right now. But now with the map being set up, we have the option, again, there's our rooms, all, or we can choose a particular zone to clean or mop, right? So we have that flexibility there. We can add another zone, things like that. But let's look at our no-go zone. So right here, we can do a virtual wall. We have our no-go zone. 
Gonna adjust that and a no mop zone. So if you have anything in particular, I'm thinking like seasonal, this is helpful. Maybe you have a Christmas tree decorated and a Christmas tree skirt and this wants to attack that and get stuck with it. You can just set those no-go zones or maybe have an area that you never want to maintain. You know, there's a lot of cables, cords, things like that, maybe shoes on the ground. You just set this up however your environment enables you to get that best clean possible to also make it easy on yourself and your vacuum to just never even go near those areas. So set up walls if you want, set up zones. And again, you can differentiate between not cleaning and going there, right? So that's gonna be your no-go zone. Or is there a particular area you don't want it to mop? You have that option right there from within the app. Map management now shows that we have our map one there. We can delete it. We can also toggle this on right here. We can do a new map. So we have our multi-floor support but very easy to navigate, change and tweak the map as you see fit. Now let's put the vacuum through our cleaning tests. So we just made two passes on the rug right here, cleaning all of that debris. No noticeable hair. That's fantastic. We do have a nice sand skid mark here and I can still feel the sand. So it had the most trouble picking that up, but man, moving around the rug, that's one of the best hair cleaning results I've seen. It's even better than their L10S Ultra. Now let's flip over the vacuum itself and you'll notice this brush roller does a much better job picking up hair due to the bristles that we have here, but it does come at a cost. And the cost is that, look at how tangled the hair is. Now, usually it would take you weeks, if not months, to see the same results here, but I put a lot of hair down on the floor, pretty large pieces that we're able to pull out. But that's what will happen with this style of brush roller you'll notice that it does a really good job with the hairs, especially longer hairs like this, your pet hair, cat hair, things like that. But you will have to maintain it with some scissors or a cleaning tool to cut the hair off every once in a while. So be sure to always check this and the side cleaning brush. But that's so far so good with what it's able to do. Much better than I was expecting with the hair, but it will get caught right here. Making our way through our second pass, we got a main cleaning brush air right here. This can be pretty common if you'll notice you have a lot of hair and tangles here. It's smart enough to sense that there's an issue and it will notify you. Most of the time, no, you're not going to be having this much hair in your vacuum in one pass. Again, this is more of a torture test to really see how it's able to perform. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna clean this up and let it finish its second pass where we still have some sand that I hope that it's gonna be able to pick up. All right, so we just finished our second clean here. There is some sand to be found on the floor still, but it's really small particles that it's just not able to lift up and off the floor. There's really no hair to be found here at all. Same can be said for the larger crumbs from the cereal. There's nothing on the floor here, but anything smaller like particles of sand, it will be able to get a majority of it, but you'll want to have it make a couple of trips. And spot cleaning would be a better setting here where you're gonna get multiple passes 
in the same area to really try to make sure everything's picked up. So you've seen firsthand how the vacuum performs in everyday use as well as our own custom cleaning tests. Let's talk about the results. Now keep in mind this is our own data not to be interpreted as official spec. Consult with the brand if you have any questions. Also I want to point out that each of these individual data points that we're looking at does not always equal the best. So if it's the highest or the lowest that doesn't always mean it's the best or the worst. So keep that in mind. Take everything with a grain of salt but we want to actually provide you guys with data to look at to hopefully empower you to make the best decision for your needs. It gets very confusing out there. There's a lot of terms thrown around. So how do they actually compare? We did a couple of tests to be able to give you some nice benchmarks to help you decide. So first up, max suction power. The D10 Plus has 4,000 PAs of suction. Higher, the better. Dreamy's lineup overall averages a 4,217. That skewed upward from one of their premium models that has 5,300 PAs. Typically, you're going to see 4,000 PAs on all of their other models, and that's going to be above average from about 30 units that we've tested, which come in at 3,100 PA, so about 1,000 PA's difference, and again, higher is better. Max CFM, very similar to suction power, the higher the better, but it doesn't always indicate the type of clean you're going to get. Sometimes you can have a really low CFM or suction power and still get incredible cleans, i.e. if you're ever familiar with iRobot Roomba lineup, they don't really score very high in these categories, but they have some of the best cleaning out there. So it's not just the brute force of higher is better. So always keep that in mind with data, but they are good indicators to at least help know that we're going in the right direction with whatever vacuum we end up getting. So the D10 plus 8.7 CFM higher is better. Dreamy's average is 9.3. The average tested is 6.9. So we're below average in Dreamy's own lineup but across the board, we're above average. Deep cleaning is our own custom cleaning test where we embed 20 grams of ground coffee into the carpet to see how good of a job it does cleaning. We weigh the dustbin before and after to get our findings. So the D10 Plus got a perfect score. Dreamy as a whole has some of the best deep cleaning robot vacuums out there. We average 19.33 grams pick back up. So, as you can tell, we're above average, but Dreamy does a fantastic job. 20 is the highest score possible. The average tested is 17, and there is a pretty big difference between 15, 16, 17, and getting up to the top at your 19 and your 20 score. So it might not seem like that much, but if you're looking for really fine things like coffee grounds, that sort of dirt and dust picked up out of the carpet, you will notice a difference. Decibels is one of the scores where the lower the decibel, the better. And in this case, the D10 Plus was loud, very loud. It was noticeably loud. So typically, you'll average around, I'd say, 70 decibels for the vacuums that come through the studio here. We average 10 decibels higher at 81.5. Three decibels, loudest RoboVac to date that we've ever reviewed, which is really interesting to me. Now, keep in mind, this is at the max suction setting, so you can always tune that down, but you might want to have it run when you're not watching TV. I like to have mine run at night, so we're not even awake for them to be disrupted. So if that's what you're going to do, it's not that big of a deal. But if you plan to have it running all the time and you're taking Zoom calls and things like that, this will most likely be noticeable to you. The average from our Dreamy lineup is 73.6, but that's being skewed higher due to the D10 Plus. And our average tested overall is 68.5 decibels. I would say 68.5, 70, that's going to be the average. Battery life, this is measured in minutes. The D10 Plus has 180 minute battery life. Dreamy as a brand overall averages 175, so we're slightly above average there. I would argue with this particular model, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of a moot point because this is smart enough to go back home recharge and resume. So again, battery life doesn't matter unless you don't have that capacity. Then of course it matters. You want to see those higher numbers there. 
or maybe you just have such a large surface area, like 3,000 square feet, then you're gonna want as much juice as possible to get your cleaning done faster so it doesn't have to come back home recharge. So that's where it really makes a difference. But in this case, around the house, things like that, you'd never even notice anything about the battery life. As tested, overall across 30 vacs, we're showing 126 minutes. So again, we have a good about, you know, 35, 40 minute um, bump up in battery life. That's typical with Dreamy. They tend to be on the higher side of your battery runtime as well as your battery capacity. Speaking of battery capacity, here we go. Milliamp hours, that's how everything's measured. 5,200 is our milliamp hour capacity for the D10 Plus battery. Dreamy averages 5,400. That's in part thanks to a 6,000 milliamp hour battery for one of their mopping modules that technically still does vacuuming, which is why we've included it. But all of Dreamy's RoboVacs outside of that one particular model, it's the W10, all have 5,200 milliamp hour battery capacity. So that really is the standard for Dreamy. As tested for all the other models that have come through our studio, 3,200 typically is what we're seeing in regards to the average. All of Dreamy's products have the same height, 3.8 inches that's going to be the very top of our lidar navigation dome that is super standard typically 3.8 3.9 is what you're going to see on any lidar equipped vac all of dreamy's products have that which is why we have the same score there as tested across the board though 3.5 is the average so technically it's a little bit lower but again this average includes units that don't have lidar navigation which makes sense why you're seeing it a little bit on the lower side there we have some that come in right around three inches or even a little bit less. Bin capacity, this could be a moot point as well since we have the self-emptying bin, but this does have a 400 milliliter bin capacity, which is on the larger side compared to Dreamy's products. We're right within that average there. Technically, they're a little bit higher at 458 milliliters, but it's super close. Same with the average tested across the board at 422. You would never notice with the self-emptying because it's gonna go back home and empty the bin whenever it wants. Water tank capacity is measured in milliliters. This one also, depending on your make and model, if it has the ability to refill and clean it, itself. These typically tend to be lower, just like a self emptying version with its dustbin. But in this case, we don't have that refill option here. So we have a higher and larger capacity water tank. So you don't have to do refills every clean. It's going to be like every other clean or so, depending on your settings. 145 milliliters for the D10 plus Dreamy's average is 182. So we're a little bit on the lower side there. As tested across the board, our average is 175 milliliters, so slightly below average there as well. Now let's talk about cost. There's so many different variables and factors that go into the cost of your RoboVac. What's it equipped with? Does it come with a self-emptying base? That's gonna increase your price point by a couple hundred dollars. Does it have a LiDAR navigation and mapping? Does it have mopping and a water tank? Does it have the ability to clean and dry the mop pads, refill, all of that stuff? increases the price point, but I'd also argue it increases its functionality and usefulness. This particular model is very budget friendly for what you're getting, a water tank and a self emptying bin. It's one of the most affordable dreamy products as you'll see from our average by a couple hundred dollars. And it's actually well in line with the average across the board. Again, this consists of RoboVacs that don't have, right, your self emptying bin or mopping as well as some that have that and beyond. So as tested, we're right at the average with this vacuum, which is good to see. So it's not gonna be too expensive for what you're getting. So let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to the Dreamy D10 Plus. First thing I wanna say is if you're considering the Dreamy D9, go ahead, spend a couple extra bucks. You're gonna to want to get that self emptying base. You don't need to upgrade to the Z10. That's gonna give you some better vision on the front, but it's gonna cost you a little bit more. It's really up to you if that's what you prefer. If you want to save a couple extra bucks and have a vacuum that runs a little bit louder, this one will be good enough for you, but you're going to want to get that self-emptying base if you're buying a RoboVac. The good news is everything else in regards to the feature set is as expected. We have a mopping module, LiDAR navigation for advanced mapping and features within the mobile app, and we have the ability to self-empty. 
Every critique I have is basically wanting more features from their higher end models to trickle down to this model without increasing the price point. So it's not necessarily rooted in reality. I'd love to have a cleaning and drying and refilling mopping module with this unit as opposed to just basically the damp paper towel wipe that we get here. And I'd like some better advanced 3D vision with AI, all that good stuff on the front here, making this a better device for cords, toys, things like that on the floor. It can really help it see better. This with the LiDAR is gonna be good enough, but you will still have to tidy your house. If you don't, you'll notice some tangles and stuff in the brush roller if it picks up a cord, things like that. I also wanna point out 3D vision isn't perfect, but it is a noticeable difference in navigation if you have one that is equipped with those sensors. Some even give you the ability to use this as a security device to monitor your house, which I think is really cool. Other than that though, at this price point, the features are as expected, but I do wanna point out this particular model is very loud with that maximum suction setting. It's one of the loudest Robovacs we've ever reviewed. For me, that doesn't matter personally because I have my vacuums running at night when nobody's around, so it's not gonna disturb you. But if you plan for whatever reason to run this all the time during the day and your home, you can find quieter models out there.